Hello YouTube, my name is Daniel and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can add a widget to your Android app. So the app we are going to be working on is one that I have on the Play Store. It is a Raspberry Pi and Linux management app. So with this app you can connect to your Raspberry Pi or Linux device, view the performance data and then run some custom commands and deploy some scripts. So the widget that I've added to my app is this widget here, pretty basic, it just shows the CPU, the memory and the hard drive usage of the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can also see it on the emulator here, it's not connected to anything at the moment, so I just have it say a not applicable status in each of the cells. So to get started adding a widget, you would need to edit the Android manifest and you would need to add a receiver and this receiver will be used to actually update the data on your widget. And also you need to provide the metadata, which will be Android name, app widget provider, and then a XML resource. I've just called mine app widget provider. That isn't here. It will be need to be put under the XML folder in your res directory. I provide a minimum width and a minimum height of my widget. An update period set to zero milliseconds. The reason I've set this to zero is because I'll be handling the update in a different way. The minimum update period for a normal widget is set to 30 minutes. That is too slow for the type of um, data that I'm going to be displaying on the, on the screen. Um, if we've got a CPU and memory running high, we don't want to be updating that widget every 30 minutes. We need it to be more frequent. So I'm essentially going to use an alarm manager and set a recurring task to run every minute in order to update the widget. You also have to provide a description for your widget and a layout and also a widget category. The layout has to be a simple layout such as linear or relative layout. You can't use more complex layouts such as constraint layout and custom views. So firstly, I have two layouts. One is just to show progress. So it just has a progress bar in the center and a gray background. The second layout actually has a text used in there, which display the CPU, the memory, and the hard drive usage. Now we can create that class, which we mentioned in the Android manifest. So this is in the widget folder, and it's under performs widget. So your widget class will need to extend app widget provider. You can then override the method on receive. Once you've received an attempt in your widget, you can then go ahead and call this update function. This function contains a lot of app specific code, um, but I'll just run you through this. So firstly, we grab the app widget IDs, and this is an array of all the widgets that are currently on display. I then open um, share preferences and get a list of all of the Linux or Raspberry Pi devices that the user has saved. I then go through and get their username and password in order to connect to the device and get the CPU disk and memory data. By default, I only allow the user to have one device in the widget. If they haven't chosen a device, then we'll just use the first connected device. And we're just storing this in shared preferences and every device will have a Boolean value, whether it has been chosen or not. And it will have the IP address, the username and the password. So essentially I loop through all the devices, check which one has been chosen, and then use the EIP, the username and password to connect via SSH, run the commands, and then display it on the widget. So once we've got the chosen device, we firstly know all the views, and this is essentially showing the progress widget or the loading widget, which is this one here. So just show the progress bar whilst we actually get the results from the command. And I have this function here in my repository to run those commands. It's just called pi commands. And you just pass in the IP address, the username and the password. And I'll go ahead and connect. If there's an error, then we'll just show the progress bar again and just leave it like that. If it's successful, what we'll do is we'll switch the layout to the normal layout where we have all the text views and then set the text for the CPU, the memory, and the hard drive usage. And then once that's all done, we'll call the app widget manager 
And then once that's done, we'll call the app widget manager and then call the method update app widget, pass in the ID and then pass in the views, which is defined here under remote views. And inside that, we can then update all the text views and get that applied and then call the app widget manager to update it. In order to update the widget on a more frequent basis, I mentioned you have to use alarm manager. So I am doing that in the main activity. So as soon as the main activity is created, let me just zoom in a bit more. As soon as the main activity is created, I'm getting an instance of the alarm manager. The alarm manager can be used to set up repeating tasks. I declare an alarm intent, which is an intent for my performance widget class. And I set the alarm action to action app widget update. I then declare pending intent. And an important note, if you are running this on Android 12, or you want this app to run on Android 12 devices, you will need to provide an intent flag. Otherwise, without a pending intent flag, um, the app will just crash and throw an exception. Once you set up your pending intent, you can then use your alarm manager to set a repeating alarm. And then you can provide an interval, which for me is 1000 milliseconds, um, but it will be forced up to 60,000 milliseconds as of Android 5.1, but any lower devices will be running every 10,000 milliseconds. And then you pass in your pending intent. And that is all you need to set up the repeating task. So every 10,000 milliseconds or 60,000 milliseconds, depending on the version of Android, the intent will be launched to run my performance widget class. And because of the action at, at widget update, that would then be triggered in the on receive method here. And then we go ahead and run the update function which I ran through earlier. So if you guys are looking to add widgets to your apps, I will put the code in the description for you and also some links to some helpful resources that I found. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. Please like the video and please subscribe.